Uh, yeah, so uh, exciting stuff here at HSC. Thank you for continuing to tweet us. We love it. And make sure to hit us up at Heroes Esports. Let's check out where we're going to in game number two for our next battleground. As a reminder, Warhead Junction has been manned out. So is Sky Temple. Towers of Doom we just played on, and now the Playing Ducks get to elect where we are going. Mm. And we're going to Tomb of the Spider Queen. I think that... <laughs> They're in a position where they're damned if they do and they're damned if they don't. Yeah. Um, this is going to be another map where playing Ducks probably feels very comfortable because mm -hmm. everybody has so much experience on this. But it's another map where Dignitas is still very, very strong and very comfortable in themselves as well. So uh, scary times. They're going to have to draft very strongly here at playing Ducks. All right. We'll see how the draft will break out here. On Tomb of the Spider Queen, Dignitas will be allowed the <laughs> first ban. There is a Zul ban. We've seen it multiple times the last couple weeks for HCC EU, which is kind of funny because yeah. last year when North America was running Zool all the time, EU didn't touch it. And now EU, with these multiple warrior comps popping up and wave clear being more prominent, Zool has become so powerful. This will be very interesting. Is playing Ducks going to ban Tassadar in the new iteration of Tassadar? We saw Team Ding Tass instantly just kind of navigate towards that ban. Yes, they will. So equal respect on either side of these teams for the new Tassadar. Uh, and again, as you were mentioning Hello, from listening to the pros, not too much surprise. And Dingtas will pick up their Malfurion for Bakery. On their side, playing Ducks now will be able to pick what they've been choosing so much lately. ETC and Tychus uh, will probably be one of their first pickups. We have some deviation in the past. We have seen mid D in the top slot. Uh, but with Malfurion taken away, those are the normal three you see from the playing Ducks at the very top of the draft. So uh, playing Ducks, do you go this route? I think Tychus has to be a less of a factor for them. I think I agree with you. Mm -hmm. um, yes, it's been actually pretty substantial. Both them and B Genius just go for Tychus all the time. Yeah. Uh, Playing Ducks made it work more, but over on B Genius' side, um, this is a matchup we're going to do later on, they have 11% win record with it right. when they first pick it. It's just things that maybe Tychus just isn't as strong as we thought a few weeks ago. There's that, and a lot of the times that we see Tychus picked up uh, in some of these games where you're against the big three, you're going up against a solo warrior. I don't think it has as much power against a solo warrior. You True. think about Team Dingsass? I like the ETC pick, and I like the Rhaegar pick. Nice mix up. Picking up the ETC means you're taking it away from Jay. Probably means that we'll see Tyrael in one of these two picks now, but then there is a potential that it is once again a solo warrior. And then you think about teams like um, Fnatic and Misfits. Misfits oftentimes has Solar Warrior unless they go Zarya on towards um, uh, Hasselwabs. And then you think about Team Fnatic, who has the Solar Warrior, mostly Breeze. Sometimes you'll see we'll be mixing a second one, but it's like things like Leoric that don't have big health pools and stuff yeah. like that. So um, it's, it's an interesting conundrum that we have to solve. Well, on the left side, Ding Toss now will get to elect what they would like to pick up. Now, Furion uh, is their first choice. Uh, we've seen. A few things from them in the past. Yeah. Uh, we've seen their Jaina. We've seen some Lee Ming mixed in as well. But typically, at this point, we find out their warrior composition. It's usually a Ragnos. However, we're getting Ragnos and Tychus Ooh. from Ding Toss. So they snipe away the Tychus here from the Plane Ducks, which I think is fine. Plane Ducks still yeah. have their Vala. They yes. still have their Lee Ming. They don't have to freak out about this. I think that if I'd have called these two, I would have said Ragnaros and Tyrael. Uh, but Ragnaros and Tychus can just work as well because they do see that, you know, Nande has been oftentimes thrown onto that second warrior. I mean, we, we keep talking about the second warrior kind of hypothesis as being the way to go when you're playing with the Tychus against it, um, or the Tychus against the double warrior, but Tychus still has strength against solo warrior. It's just not as predominant, nowhere yeah. near as predominant. Yeah, it's still a relatively strong assassin, but when your entire line is melting around you and their tank comes in, they pop the minigun and they kite back out, Tychus yeah. doesn't get oh. as much value as you would think. And then suddenly you have the Odin, you have the laser to deal with. Um, so, got to agree with you here. Ding Toss, now here on the left, we'll be waiting for the ban. The Plain Ducks will be popping out. Uh, if you look over here, do you get rid of the Tyrael? No, they're electing to get rid of Johanna. Cool. I like that, actually. Um, it's one of the... <laughs> nice Medivh ban as well. Uh, it's one of the warriors that has more power on this map than almost any other. Um, and we have seen Jay a bit on it in the past. Not as much, though. Like, he... Uh, I, in 2017, very rarely plays it. Uh, and then towards the end of 2016, also rarely did. But it's kind of more respect towards the map than um, the early 2016 JPL than anything. Well, with that noted, who do you think Chris plays here? There's Vala. I think Vala. There's Ming. 
And then there's also um, the original Go Runner of Chromie, yet to pull it off true. here in the actual HEC. <laughs> that is true. But Johanna being your rid of, she's one of the great counter strategies too. Hey, I, I think I would like to see Valor and Varian, actually. Yeah? Like, sorry, not Valor and Varian, Li Ming and Varian. Oh, but it will be Valor and Thrall. So Thrall kind of takes that Varian spot that I was just alluding to. Um, so it's it's a it's a strong front line that they have, ETC and Thrall. Uh, Thrall's going to try and contest with our good old Ragnaros by the looks of things in that solo lane, I imagine. Yeah, hold that bot lane down. Uh, so we need a warrior here to the left for Ding Toss. Is Muradin the go-to? Or do we go more <laughs> Tyrael? I'm happy that the Thrall current skin is the one that's on fire, because he might end up on fire down towards <laughs> that bottom lane in a little bit. May as well embrace it at this point, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> he definitely had that thought when he picked the skin. He was like, you know what? <laughs> it's going to happen in the bottom lane. <laughs> yeah, so what were we thinking? Were we thinking? Were we still thinking Tyrael? Tyrael, or I actually would like to have Muradin. Yeah? Honestly. Um, just because you want to have those rotations to the bottom lane mm. to help out with Thrall and Muradin can be incredibly powerful for those rotations. Tyrael, while solid, I think he loses some of his value on this map. He's got decent wave clear, but his he needs room, I right, need to open up. Oh, instead, though, we move into Varian and Jaina, which Mane is now becoming a Jaina main, which is so interesting to see when he used to love <laughs> Kael'thas so much, and now he's gone the complete opposite way. Yep. yep, uh, yep. But Varian's getting more play here in the HCC. I think for a long time, actually, when I uh, spoke to Mane, Halfway through last year, he, he did tell me that he loves Jaina. She's just not viable right now. So there was a long period of time where you know, he was playing the Kael Thasses, he was playing the other mages, uh, and didn't quite get to play Jaina for a long time or, uh, in competitive, but he was always practicing it in the background quite a lot. Uh, so yeah, he's, he's definitely very good at it. Well, there's a composition to the right. With Thrall being here, Nande, I would assume, would be on the Thrall. So I don't think you can go for a Nubrak. Do they have anyone that can play a Nubrak or Thrall and interchange out here? Uh, mm, I don't think so. They, I think they're looking for something for Spot Billy now. Yeah. Um, which ends up, in my mind, being a false stat. Or Zarya. Or Zarya. Yeah, for see shields. Zarya working here. That would be good. Um, be very good. False has been one of their main go-to. Oh, there's a Chromie. Oh. Okay, wow. All right. Never mind then. Okay then. <laughs> so will Sport Billy play Vala then? And then Chromie yeah. is here for Chris. Okay, so. Has to be, surely. We are finally getting our first look at the original Chromie is the best hero in the world player, Chris. Yeah. Uh, who, as you know, plays her on the stream all the time. But he's been talking about it a lot. He even had that little meme whenever we saw Schwimpy play. Yes. Chromie a couple of weeks ago. Stealing the spotlight. Yeah. I made this. Oh. This was mine. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's good to see. Um, of course, maybe, uh, you know, he does want to steal some of that spotlight back yeah. away. Um, I think if, if anything's to be proven from what we've seen in Europe so far is that Chromie is very viable on this map, yep. especially in those later slots. Yeah. Um, and looking at what Team Dignitas has to get onto the Chromie, the only way they're going to do it is if she mispositions. Sure. Because there's no dive, really, there. Jaina, Varian, Tychus, Ragnaros, unless they flank. I also like how they masked it, too, with the support being grabbed in the very early stages as well as ETC. Yeah. Normally, if you pick up a Jona, Johanna in those first couple of slots, it's kind of an indicator. Okay, they want to go for the Chromie because they pair so well together. But they banned it out instead. So they didn't have to deal with the wave clear that would come from Ding Toss to shut down Chromie. And they picked Valor, which is traditionally in the in HCC so far been played by Chris. That is correct. All right, guys, game number two here, Tomb of the Spider Queen. How will the Chromie and Vala combination work out? We'll find out here on game number two. All right, so to the left hand side here, we do have Team Dignitas Bakery gonna be playing Malfury and JPL on Varian. We will have Snitch gonna be on Tychus. Next up is Many and Jaina, as always. And finally, Zalia will be playing Ragnaros. To the far right in the red, it'll be the playing Ducks here. Wolf Joe will be showing off his Rhaegar gameplay. Chris Blosion showing off ETC, and it's probably one of his best heroes next to that, and Johanna. Sport Billy will indeed be on Vol. There's Chris, man, showing hey. off the Chromie life. And Nande will be playing Thrall, holding that bottom lane. So cool. I, I like what they tried to do in this draft. I really do. Um, this could have some punch behind it. Mm -hmm. Time Walker's Pursuit is going to be the level one. Uh, level 13, obviously, going to be reaching through time. <coughs> just just <laughs> to throw that out there. Why do you got to stab me like that? Why you got to bring me down? Uh, it's, 
I, I enjoy those kinds of things. That's, that's fair. Fine. That's fair. <laughs> I do think there are some tools here for Ding Toss already. They yeah. have really good wave clear already with Ragnaros. They have Jaina as well. So one of the best things you can do against a Chromie is to pin her in her base. Mm -hmm. Keep her at back. Now, you still have to be careful because she can still seed you down. Uh, but get her on her side of the map. They also have Incredible Engage. If Varian's able to get a flank on that Chromie, it's going to be lights out. Yeah. Immediate stun into Warbringer oh, yeah. into the damage follow up. And then, of course, his uh, heroic strike uh, is damaged by itself on enough. And then you have a fault from any of the team members. It's going to be pretty devastating. Yeah. She has very little health. Yeah. Poor little Chromie has very little health. But I, I agree with you. I think what Team Ding Test's strategy is going to be here, you know, maybe not 100% for seeing the Chromie down the line in that draft, is just going to be. We're just going to obliterate your front line before Chromie's got any chance of actually being able to do something. I mean, if Varian lands his stun into taunt on anybody, yeah. with Jaina and Ragnaros following up with the potential Sulfura smash down the line at 10, that person's dead. Devastating. Um, I'm trying to think how they're going to save them. Cleanse, and that's it. That's, that's the save. That is pretty much it right there. On the other side, too, we do have really solid engage for playing Ducks, the ETC, into Rhaegar Clan itself. So you could have some Mosh Pits happening yep. here as well. Uh, of course, it's going to be hard to pull off against Bakery. Uh, his positioning last game was stellar on that Mount Furion, and he was always there for the clans. It's one. Of, it's why he's considered one of the best in Europe as both a yeah. leader and a support player. Even though most of his time during those fights was actually spent in the back lines, you know, yeah. just healing up and doing what he could, he positioned himself very well down to that bottom right-hand corner where they were holding them in place for so long and then getting really good Twilight Dreams whenever they would try and go for that more hard engage that they absolutely needed to do. So there were really good ways for a Ding Tester to just shut down playing Ducks and cause them a lot of issues. Yeah. On the other side, JPL playing Varian. I think this is the first time in HEC that we've seen him play the Varian. They've played against Varian a couple of times in the past. Uh, I'm excited to see how he pulls off this mm. character that's kind of more engage-based. I feel like every time I watch JPL, yeah. he has some kind of escape available to him. Yeah. And uh, right now, Varian kind of loses out on that. He's such a hard engager. I think they've played it once in HCC. Okay. Um, and they've they've also practiced with it a lot. Sure. I, I know that just from, you know, actually, you know, knowing these guys pretty darn well. You know, so they're very comfortable with it indeed. Normally it would be coupled up with more the more traditional comps that we've seen in the past. Like, say for example, the Varian, the Li Ming, and it's like, oh, you've been taunted, ah, you're gonna get blown up. But still, Anything on this side can just follow up that stun. Like any Jaina combo coming out, any well, the Sulfura Smash obviously is a yeah. big one. I think Sulfura Smash is a big one. That's yeah. that's the one that you get. It's crazy because it's on such a low cooldown, right? You can keep going for these engages and kind of condition your opponent to not ever respawn yeah. uh, to the hard engage. And next thing you know, third or fourth time that you have that very engage pop in, Sulfura Smash comes out and you have a dead opposing member. And that's absolutely what Cleanse has to be saved for. I can't think of any other time that Cleanse has to be saved for for playing Ducks because. Sulfura Smash and Cleanse have very, very similar cooldowns. I think Sulfura Smash is just a little bit longer. Uh, so you can technically cleanse out every Sulfura Smash off the back of a taunt. The taunt is the thing that you're going to have to be cleansing, of course. Yeah. So you don't get hit smack dab in the middle by the Sulfura Smash. But that's a very finite small window you've got to have if you're Wolf Joe on the other side on playing Ducks. Wolf Joe's got this, man. Well, <laughs> we'll be right back. A slight technical difficulty. We'll be back with game number two. Everything that I do in my life is working towards getting on to the big stage of video gaming. I don't want to get second place this year. Like, I'm, I'm going for first. I won't be happy unless we win. My name is Andrew Rodriguez, and I go to University of Texas at Arlington. Daniel Lee and I go to University of Connecticut. My name is David Young, and I go to school at University of Tennessee, Knoxville. My name is Michael Udall, and I go to ASU. Heroes of the Dorm is an amateur tournament focused on college teams, playing not for prize money, but for tuition. This is my first year competing in Heroes of the Dorm. Gaming at first was just a hobby, but now it's kind of evolved into part of my life. I grew up in Mesa, Arizona. Gaming was definitely frowned upon. I would think, gee, what a waste of time. You guys ought to be studying algebra or anything worthwhile. My parents used to hate when I played, but now they're like, this is so cool, you're going to Seattle for playing a video game. Hello and welcome. 
Welcome to the Heroes of the Dorm Heroic Four. Here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest, four college teams have come to battle it out. We started over a month ago, and now we have Tennessee, UT Arlington, UConn, and Arizona State. We all felt really good after the win, but we came here to win the whole thing, so the work's not over yet. You don't reach that level without the dedication and the focus and the endless hours honing your craft. It's gonna take a determination and discipline, just like succeeding in anything in life. It's just, it's intense, that's the best way to put it. Until you play the game and try to excel at it, you just, you have no idea. An outlet like that where students come together and, and share the same interests, that's what it's all about. This was the future of esports that we imagined. Taking a lot of damage, he blows up in a matter of seconds. Shot low on HP, but the boy with the oh, they are going for the core. They're gonna be able to save it in 10, and it goes down. GG! Welcome back to the HGC. We're going straight into it. If you're just now joining us, Team Dignitas is curling up 1-0 over the Plain Ducks, and we are on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Yes, we are, and we have a cool little comp on the side from Dignitas, of course, with Jaina, Ragnaros, Varian, Tychus, and Malfurion rounding things out for them. So excited to see our solo Varian warrior, which is gaining momentum in HGC. That it is. We're seeing it more and more. To the far right, the plain ducks here. Nande will be showing off his thrall. Sports Billy will be here on the bottom left as Vala on that beautiful, beautiful yellow rooster. Chrome will be showing off Chris. Wolf Joe on Rhaegar. And Chris Flosion will be our ETC. All right. So already starting things off for JPL going for overpower uh, at level one. So when his power E blocks uh, and then basic here into his attack, that means that. Uh, Scizora Strike cooldown is going to be refreshed, and the next one will do 25% more damage. So a little bit of extra uh, burst coming out from the Varium that we're going to be seeing. I guess their main objective is literally just, okay, we know that Heroic Strike actually does quite a bit of damage off the back of a combo from a tank Varium. Let's add a little bit more to that with the burst potential that we're going to have here across the board. And I like it. Getting slightly more oomph there. You yeah. would also pair that with level 7 talent, where your uh, parry gets a reduction on cooldown as well if you do parry something. And uh -huh. next thing you know, you're just chunking whoever you're on to. Oh, and yes. it's also a good counter to that bronze talent that Chromie most likely will be picking up. Uh, the Flying Ducks will continue their rotations here, start to see them start to push down. In terms of actual wave clear, it's all going to be Jaina. So Ding Toss is doing a really good job of kind of countering the rotations by letting Mane heal off as the plane ducks are playing as a four-man rotation and Jaina just comes in and she slides in gets a free wave clear and heads back to the team and she could do this because of scouting drone being here on the left here from bakery plane ducks as they move as four will always be spotted and Jaina can make the correct rotation now one of the things we uh, shrimpy mentioned when he was playing uh, the chromie on this map was that Yes, she can provide great poke through the mid and top lanes, but also what's important for Chromie is that later on in the next couple of levels, she starts to attempt to put focus down on towards that bottom lane, try and gank the person down there. They'll always have gems. Uh, and also, you need to alleviate some of that pressure because right now down there, Ragnaros is actually winning that lane pretty hard um, yeah. against Nande on the Thrall. And that will continue to occur. His wave clear is just pretty powerful against Thrall Thralls. Better, I feel like, in the early game and straight up the one on one duel. Yeah. But yes, that wave clicker from Zelia is just going to be so powerful for keeping that push going, which is what it's all about in that bottom lane. Yeah, wave it's, control. It's a very important uh, lane down there. It, you can already see, um, well, we, we just previously looked at that, but most of the ammo is already gone from the towers there. Uh, as Zelia has just been pressuring really hard. I think that's probably the key to Ragnaros versus Thrall, is that if you give Thrall a little bit of room, yeah, he'll just keep lightning, chain lightning you and chain lightning you over and over. But if you're Ragnaros, get in his face. Absolutely get in his face, because he probably won't be able to continue that sustain against you, especially if you're hitting Qs at the right time when those waves are in the middle of the mix. Yeah, and speaking of Ragnaros, he's actually going for catching fire at level four, which I think is great against Chromium. 
Chris explosion taking some damage here. Joe's retreat and gets a heal from Wolf Joe. But uh, again, on that catching fire, being able to increase your regen of health is wonderful against poke comms. And with Chromie and Bala being on the opposing team, you're going to get poked. Yeah. And you're going to get poked a lot. So catching fire makes sense there. You also have the armor. And look, I mean, he's actually Zalia here. It's a small thing, but it's a very important thing. He's speeding up his stacking of his level one and level four because he has so much room in that bottom lane. He left the bottom lane for a moment because it was so pushed up against Thrall to go mid, get a globe, come back, and is now there to collect globe and collect stacks as well for his level one. So that's a lot of room that Zalia's found. That it is. At the same time though, Plane Dogs is actually taking a lead here on the turn-ins as the constant pressure on the bottom lane has been a thing here for Ding Toss. Plane Dogs has been holding the top lane here. Hello, level seven, or I suppose Oh, level that's five. the best talent. Oh my, I'm Chrono so glad sickness. to see that. Ah, oh, I love it. So you get cooldown reduction on Chrono Cygnus. You also uh, get the ability uh, to slow down the opponent for four seconds, Calaris. Four seconds. It makes me think slowing sands might be the way to go for him instead of temporal. I mean, uh, temporal. well, that's the thing too. Is like Chrono Cygnus in its own way, in my mind, is its own temporal loop. If you're able to catch anyone right. on that time trap and they're slowed down, it's easy pickings for you. Yep. W and the Q, great pick off with Bronze Talons, and now you can go for temporal loop and effectively have two. You get an engage on the temporal loop for your opponent, and then when the variant comes to dive on you, you drop the Chrono Cygnus and you're good to go. Hold that thought here. Snitch is oh. in trouble, and that is going to be an elimination here. Chris. Bringing out the shots as well. There'll be the engage here from Wolf Joe. Uh, but yes, again, Chrono Sync is incredibly good. It's a pseudo temporal loop in my eyes. You could go Sandstorm here, or I wouldn't mind seeing the actual temporal loop itself. And that way you have so many engages and so many pickoffs at those time traps you get hit. Yeah, this this can be interesting. Uh, so that was actually first blood <laughs> during this game, uh, going down for playing Ducks. So, and they got the turn off the back of it as well. Zaylee under some pressure. Likewise, so is many. Chris is trying to get on towards him there, using that stun. And that will be seconds going down here on the side of Team Dignitas. JPL, though, comes in from the right side and will pick off Chromie. She did the fadeaway shot, taking on Jaina, but JPL's here to uh, clean up that fight. Nice rotation from Dignitas. Playing Ducks continues at their push in the bottom left, but already there are Webweavers in the middle and the top. Playing Ducks doesn't have to engage this. All they want to do is try to keep this Webweaver yeah. alive longer so they get more value in the middle and the top lane. Solid positioning from them, even losing a homie. And there will be slowing sands coming into play at the level eight here, aka her level 10 talent. Now, what's important there for Team Dignitas is actually they took a lot of the momentum away from playing ducks just by getting the chromie before these web weavers come down. If a chromie is behind these web weavers, then it's so much more difficult to actually clean them up without taking heavy, heavy damage because you have to be so close up towards them. Oh, a slight miss there from Chris on towards JPL. Wouldn't have done too much, but. Every little bit's gonna count. Yep, getting that poke in there can be wonderful. And Dignitas, we were talking about it earlier, they do clear all the web weavers here. So they hold on slightly behind in experience, but they do have a total of 41 gems available for turn in. Would love to get that towards around level nine, nine and a half there, so ah. you can take that momentum and run with it. The slowing sands. That's sitting on top of the turn and slide. Yeah, that's annoying. <laughs> Which is super annoying. Yeah. It doesn't do damage, but does grant vision when somebody goes to walk in on there, and they can stay there for a long time. All right, here's JPL continuing to look around. Yeah. For shots here or there. That's uh, very, very cool. I mean, I wouldn't even mind if that was slightly to the left and down, um, so that you can even potentially get some good shots off if people are trying to retreat, but look how much it slows Jay there. Mm -hmm. Really not much he can do. And one thing that's important to note is that that does consume mana, I think, during the duration that you're actually using it. But because Time Walker's Pursuit is the normal go-to level one talent here for Chromies now, it gives them a bit more aid. That's Jay. Look at the slow kicking oh. in there, that four, four seconds. A cleanse yeah. had to come out, especially with Chris Logie coming with the power slide, but it wasn't enough. JPL falls and playing Ducks hit 10 first. That was a lot of gems. Yeah, that was a lot of gems that just uh, were removed here from Team Dignitas. So as you say, yeah, tens are here. We're going to have Ancestral Heal, Earthquake, Mosh, as well as Strafe coming in. So a lot of damage can happen on the side from playing Ducks. And they're looking on towards Jaina. She is caught in no man's land. It's a nice attempt with the Ring of Frost, looking to burst down Dvala, but no will not happen. Nice attempt at a trade, uh, yeah. considering that she, uh, Jip Mene knew he was dead. Yeah, Cesar Hill is burned, but with a Jaina now down, the wave clear falls significantly here for Dignitas. Ragnaros will have to be the one to clear up the middle and bottom lane, which allows the play Ducks to set up here and start sieging upon the fort. Bonecore has been popped in the middle lane. 
so we will be able to have that defense in here for a while, but that should be a dead port with the Web Weavers pushing in. Yeah. I, I love the choice to actually use Molten Core in the middle lane on this map, because obviously if you clean up top lane very quickly, um, and then there's the potential that you can't reach other lanes, uh, and then you're just kind of useless. But going on the middle lane means that you can reach almost every, the top and the middle, uh, and then be able to clean those two up very, very quickly, and just kind of put your opponents in a bit more of a hard situation to actually put on some pressure. That sounds OP. What you just said there, Calaris. It's, it's, Holding top lane, bottom lane, and middle lane? It's, Molten Core is insane! <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> Dinktis holds for a little bit here and is able to hold that top four. It is low on health, though. Playing Ducks could see it down another point. Sandstorm has been popped. There is a strafe into the Earthquake, and that will be a dead J Tychus here. JPL in trouble as well. He's trying to run away, but is not able to do so. Chris trying to siege up for another shot. Bakery does sidestep it and will live, but two members dead once again here for the Toss. They're getting brilliant picks. They really are. And, you know, this always happens, but look what's happened at level 13. It's actually timeout. Yeah, Chris so. really values uh, that level 11. And I think it makes a lot of sense here, too, especially with the engage that is available for Dignitas. Yeah. You want to be able to, one, either Get ready for the Warbird guys coming your way. You want to time that out, or you want to make sure that you don't get hit by Slayer Smash. And now you have that tool available to you, because Chromie, we saw the other day, almost gets one shot by Slayer oh, Smash yeah. at full health. Yeah, it's uh, not pretty, uh, is the best way to look at it. Uh, but I think that overall, it's going to, as long as there's good backup from ETC and Thrall, when she has to use the timeout, it's going to be it's going to be very, very useful for her. I mean, Earthquake alone means that if you're trying to get on towards that Chromie, not only does the threat of timeout deny you from really going that far, but then to think that Earthquake is there to slow you all down when it comes in, that's actually very, very scary. Yeah, that it is. Dignitas will have to break down the front line before they have a chance of even getting back to the back line. Uh, which, to be fair, if ETC and Thrall do fall, Playing Ducks will be on the back foot. But uh, it is still what Claris is alluding to, is that it's a very difficult task to do here for Dignitas. Mm -hmm. However, for now, they are holding on. They have yet to lose a fort somehow after two Web Weaver pushes and uh, are primed to get a turn in at some point here as they have 38 gems. They are just sitting pretty and waiting. All right, so a little bit of a slow movement forward here. If they could get top fort, that would be nice because it is so very low, but they've got a lot of gems that we want to turn in for themselves. Chris just waiting on the wings, looking to protect anything that's going to come their way. Dignitas right now, I'm trying to think what they can actually do in response. They need to get themselves level 13, that's about to pop. And then from there, I'm not sure if the engagement's even going to work. That's unstoppable. Ooh. Even you, Sulfura Smash comes in on towards Thrall. Hardly does anything, though. Spell shield, man. Yeah, that really soaked up a lot. Pretty good pickup there from Nande, preventing a majority of the damage that Dignitas is kind of banking on to mm. get their pickoffs. Nande will survive there. Chris, explosion, taking poke as well. And you just saw what their strategy is. They haven't engaged, they cleanse it, and then they try to pick on the other member that was on the other side. Sadly, it was Thrall here with the uh, spell shield, preventing everything from occurring. But the idea is have the engage come your way, have Bakery go for the cleanse, and then have JPL go for the counter engage on another member. And without that was or a smash in their arsenal uh, going into any fight in the next 20 seconds or so, I think they, they lack a significant amount of power a lot is banking on that taunt and the follow-up, and without Sulfura Smash, it is difficult. So they have to use it. Um, they have to be wary of who they're using it against, because even Valor now has Gloom, mm -hmm. and she's going to be protected as well a little bit. Yeah, there's so many tools here to deal with that combo. But it comes down to Mane. He's got to hit a solid ring of Frost and set up his team for the engage, uh, especially off the back of a JPL engage on the variant. Continue poked up from the playing Ducks. They are playing this very well. They're never putting themselves in a slot where they can get picked off. If they ever get vision on the opposing team, they just rotate. They move to a different part of the map, push that in, get more vision, and make sure to continue to drop that sandstorm. I must say that Dignitas has done very well in terms of the defense because they still have all of their forts up. But one thing also to note is that as much as Chromie has a lot of power on this map, she also has a disadvantage in that kind of sieging, pushing style. So yes, she'll do a lot of damage to your opponents if they sit around and don't do anything, but she really doesn't do much at all to those buildings. So when you're in a game with a Chromie, it feels kind of slow. Like, for the forts don't die as quickly as they normally would with, say, like a Li Ming on your side uh, in a similar role, but has poke that does big damage to uh, yep. buildings. 
So that's one thing that playing Dix is going to have to navigate around because right now they haven't done much with it. And their way of doing that has been pushing Web Weavers, but Dick Toss with Ragnaros has done such a good job of clearing yes. with the Ojana that you can see how difficult it could be. And that also is a counterpoint, too. As we go to the late game, it becomes much harder for the playing Ducks to clear those waves because Chromie can't handle her own Web Weavers, which are uh, coming her way. Yeah. Ball will be okay with the auto attacks and the multi shot build, and Raw will be able to get up on top of that. But that opens up Varian to go in for the engage, and then Tyke is here with Odin. The siege potential for Dingtots when they actually do get a turn in is pretty substantial if they're not getting poked by Chromie. Uh, so watch out for that as they'll be having another turn in and about six gems here wow. as they move towards their level 16 spike. Blood for blood coming in for Thrall. So that's almost always going to be used on Varium. I don't see any other target. <laughs> There's just no point, uh, really, uh, or effectively, I should say, unless he's in significant trouble. So they're really looking to get through Jay, and then once he's gone, there isn't much wall there for Team Dignitas at all. So I like the choice uh, against the solo warrior comp here that ha still, again, has a hard time flanking on towards the back line of playing Ducks. Yeah. Nande is playing very clever here with these pickups. It's all about just surviving. Yeah. We talked about it. If Chris Explosion or Thrall fall apart, playing Ducks are in a vulnerable spot. And now with these defensive spells, they should be good to go. Cleanse into Ancestral. Ring of Frost comes out on ETC. That is three heroics on ETC, and he does not get picked off. Nande in the front line will be able to pop a couple of heals here and is able to set himself up. Meanwhile, the playing Ducks did sneak someone to the top lane, and they got a turn in. Mm. Playing Ducks now will start to push down some forts. You know what I want to see from Chromie as well in two levels time? It's under Hall Anomaly. I would love to see them just set up big ring. Like, mm -hmm. she has enough damage behind her completely. Just set up big rings so even if the flank is to ever come, which is still dit hard for Team Ding Task, you make it almost nigh on impossible to get onto Chromie like that. So hopefully hopefully that comes in as they're getting nice value off these And it makers. synergizes with Chrono Sickness. Yes. So. Four seconds of slow per a time trap. That's 12 seconds of slows. That's, if they walk on top of it, that's math right there. That's three times the slow. That's insane. Oh my god. I think I agree with you though. The <laughs> Adoro Anomaly is a pickup for me. It reduces the amount of flanks that come your way. Yep. And it also just sets your team up to be safe. You don't need more damage. You're right. Chromie's fine on damage by yourself, but you have Vala and Wall yep. that can do their own damage if it comes down to it. And Adoro Anomaly is definitely the thing. I mean, there's literally, there's very few ways that Team Dingtas can start cleaning up Web Weavers when that's set up uh, as yeah. well. You can, you can put Push into a lane, set up three on that on the perimeter of where you want him to push. Uh, if your team is along with you for the ride, and then Team Ting Disaster is like, well, you know, a lot of our power is behind Ragnaros and Varian. It's like, uh, I guess we can't walk there for a while. It's yeah. pretty irritating. It is irritating. And there it is, and the whole anomaly. But what does Ding Toss do well? They oh, hang on, power slide. There goes the uh, Warbringer charge. Ding Toss knows how to hold on to a game yep. until they get that final moment to win. Oh yeah, they're they've one of the best teams at it. Three times, I think, now so far in the ACC where they were in the behind footing, and they'll continue to look for those engages here. Jay. JPL on the front line, he is getting slowed here. There goes the power slide into the Endoro Anomaly. The slow is here for JPL. He continues to keep being slowed here by Earthquake, somehow living through all the damage, but Chris Explosion will have a power slide in a few seconds here. He can go in for another engage, and Mosta is still up. So Dinkas has to be careful. Mane, though, coming in for a flank, gets picked off. The Ring of Frost goes out, but it only hits ETC. There's the Ancestor healing. Bakery oh. will be forced to Ice Buck just to live, and Chromie connects with the Sand Blast. There is two pickups. Everything for Dignitas there looked uncomfortable. Every single movement that they tried to get in there felt uncomfortable. You saw them trying to get onto Walls Fall at the beginning. He got cleansed out. JPL find themselves in a very uncomfortable position, slowed down constantly. And when you're slowed once in this against this kind of composition, you're going to be slowed a long, long, long time. It's not only the Chromie slows, it's also Frost Shot as well for Valor yeah. level 16, which is causing huge issues for Dingtas to ever find themselves a good spot to fight. Effectively, it's a stun. You're barely moving, you're isolated down, Chromie gets her set up, and then uh, I agree with you, so many uh, strong, slow-inducing abilities here for the Playing Ducks. Playing Ducks are moving towards level 20. They have a big push here from the boss, breaking down the forces. The nice little uh, sand here, the slowing sands, is set up just so the melees cannot get on top of this boss, which prevents them from getting damage there. The push continues for our team, and that is definitely going to be a keep. Playing Ducks got to be happy with that push. Yeah, definitely. That's great, great stuff for them. So, nicely done, nicely done. Uh, now Dignitas is really up against it. I, even at level 20, I'm not sure what the solution is for them, really. Because 
I think it might have to just be... I know that Submerge is, like, very, very useful, etc. But I think that they might just have to go Heroic Difficulty and hope for playing Duck Store Overextend a little bit too far into a position. And then just try and blow people up with that. Um, along with the potential, you know, Bolt of the Storm into Twilight Dream. Because that gives them some way to try to breach into Chromie's safe zone. Yeah. I know everybody in America is about safe zones or safe places. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Speed bumps too. Yeah, Chromie's, don't Chromie's definitely about that life. <laughs> Well, you're right. The bolt in the Twilight Dream becomes an issue. Also, at level 20, you get your big red button, which is helpful. I think area effect damage is one of the best ways to start dealing with Thrall and the ETC. They're very clumped together all the time. Um, but without Odin being pumped up, there's not too much AoE damage that's going off there, except for Jaina. But every time that's happened, it's yeah. been picked off by the power slide. It's not like you can even clean up the time traps as well from Chromie, because uh, when you've got Anahol Anomaly, you get three charges of it, and it comes back in the cooldown of one. So um, you... They do have health. You can see that they have health bars, and ideally you would like to clean them up before you go into there. But they come down afterwards so fast. Uh, the cooldown is pretty low considering. So now, just reaching on into this. And they're going to save this with uh, the Molten Core to start things off, but it's going to die off very fast. Yep, getting burned down. The Webweaver here to help try to finish up the keep, and they will get it. Catapult pressure in the top lane. Catapults in the middle as well. And playing Dogs, they actually have a healthy web weaver in the bottom. They can make an aggressive play here, especially with that big wave. They start to, but realizing that Cinch is in the front line, they'll play a bit safe. 21 to 19, Ding Toss is just holding on here. There goes the engage. JPL does uh -oh. move in. Ringer Frost comes out, does not connect. Massive Mosh Pit. Mene, though, is in trouble on the right side, but there is a pick off, and Varian gets picked out. Mene goes down on the right hand side. Jaina down as well, as that is going to be two for zero, three for zero here. They're going on for everybody else. Four down here. Playing Ducks has put on an absolute clinic of how to play Chromie on this map with this composition as well. Slow them for years, slow them forever and they're going to go on towards Core. Great play by playing Ducks. Got to agree with you. Bakery still getting picked off here on the back right as Chris Blusion is looking for more no, instead please. of just taking the kill. Finally, Bakery does fall. The playing Ducks bringing out their A game, looking awfully mighty right now as they will tie the series 1-1 against Dignitas. And that's what I wanted to see from the man. A different composition, yeah. a different trade-up on what they normally play, and then just straight up just playing perfect map control. And they did it. Wonderful job. I think they know that they have to bring that little bit of hashtag spice. You know, they have to bring a bit more of that to oh, this series yeah. if they're going to make waves. And they did in that game, which is great to see. You know, bringing out the good old Chris favorite there in the Chromie. It works wonders. Hopefully, they're able to find some things like that in the next maps coming up. All right, we'll find out. Game number three coming at you guys soon. We are currently tied 1-1. What do we have here? Let's get this promo tour started. <laughs> oh yeah, Lucio in the house. Oh, let's break it. Damn. 